This podcast is sponsored by Zen Hailing. Get the Z stick. What's up, everybody? How you doing? Another podcast here. Welcome to the Zen Hailing Podcast. I'm Tim Kelly, creator of Zen Hailing, and welcome or welcome back. So, appreciate you joining us here today. We've got another chock filled of knowledge podcast, and we're going to discuss everything breathing, meditation, movement, and energy. So, it's the first time you joined us. Uh, a lot of this stuff's going to be repetitive. Every week, we're going to really try and go over some fundamentals. So even right now, as we're starting this podcast, you at home, I want you setting an intention of gratitude, something you're really grateful for in your life. So it could be a person or a place or experience or even a special thing or something you're trying to cultivate. It could even be a feeling you had. I want you to set that. Because at times in this podcast, we might ask you to go with it, but also just for your own self. Know where your own self is, because as we start to talk and get into fundamentals of breathing, as we talked last week, you know, we all have 60,000 thoughts. We take 23,000 breaths every day. So if we start bringing some of that mindfulness to that each breath, and a breath as the mechanics being a breath as an inhale, a pause, an exhale, and a pause, then even if we're just bringing that intention of gratitude to each inhale for a couple minutes. It's quite an exercise. It can really go a long way with helping to instill uh, positive thoughts or if we start having negative thoughts creeping into us, go to that intention of gratitude. If it's not gratitude, put in there something that's maybe part of your possibility, part of your future, something you're trying to cultivate. So anyway, that's just setting an intention. And just like in any yoga class, Starting to bring some attention to your breath too. So if you're home and you have all these different distractions or kids yelling at you, or if you're at work and you're sneaking this podcast in and your boss is kind of looking at you, then just start to find whatever breath that is for you that starts to center you. Start to bring the inhale into your lower abdomen. Maybe explore the pause. Maybe really accentuate or lay on the exhale. So really try and exhale or expand the duration of the exhale even if you could do it twice as much as the duration of the inhale if you could do that it starts to really relax your ribs your intercostals so if you're in physical pain it helps to relax the physical body also helps to start to quiet the mind of course we're very close as we're exhaling to the pause and that's the other thing don't be in a hurry to take that next breath and don't be in a hurry to let the breath go so if you got a big inhale in Explore the pause. Let the oxygen in your lungs, in your thoracic cavity, bathe your body with the oxygen. And then after you let it out, maybe don't be in a hurry to take that next breath. Maybe explore the pause. See what it does to the mind. Start checking your thoughts. Anyway, there are the fundamentals of last week. In this podcast today, we're going to talk meditation. So it's a topic for... A lot of people that they become very intimidated because, oh crap, meditation, I'm going to have to be a monk, be in a cave, be one of those dudes like that Zen hailing guy who had a tail on the back. I mean, he was losing his mind clearly, but no, that's not the case. In fact, you know, Will Johnson, who's, who's wrote a lot about this, talks about it in depth and, you know, so what is meditation, you know? Well, meditation is an act, and meditation is a state of mind, 
And it's also a practice. So, you know, meditative state of mind where it's like we're trying to get to that point or we're trying to immerse ourselves in our own meditative practice. So a lot of that is just like any practice, doing our due diligence, sitting down, doing the work, you know, creating that time, our own personal time to actually do that. So that's a little bit about meditation. You know, meditation is also pure concentration. And it's focusing the mind to become completely absorbed into whatever object you're focusing on, whether that's a, you know, a mantra, which is a repetitive sound, home, or a mudra, a hand position, or, you know, any type of object. If you're staring at the sun or at the horizon, you know, it also is a meditation. It's one of the oldest meditations. It's from fire. So, uh, and it's pure concentration. And it's pure concentration facilitated by relaxation. So when that flow of concentration uh, is uninterrupted, then we can maybe get into the state uh, of, of meditation or start to get into the practice of meditation. Um, but be clear, if you're in a disturbed body uh, and where your body is very uncomfortable, uh, you're not going to be, you're going to have a very difficult time meditating. And although meditation appears to be mind-related, it's really initiated by performing a series of gestures with the physical body. And that's what we talk about, the posture and the alignment of meditation. And that's what we talk about, bringing the focus to breath and maybe doing some of the other tricks, third eye, tongue to the roof and the mouth, engaging your bandhas or locks. Uh, but, you know, it starts with some of the tricks with the physical body. So again, we're talking about tricks. We're not talking about even being in meditation. So you're going to have to prep yourself a little bit for it. So some of that is like I'm sitting on a yoga block on my yoga mat, but for you, uh, that might be uncomfortable for you. So you have to find whatever body where at body state and comfortable state, whether it's sitting, you know, if you're sitting at a chair then bring your butt, your sits bones to the edge, get your legs so at a comfortable angle, not restricting any type of blood flow and then start to, Bring your posture and alignment into action. And remember, your posture and alignment, when they talk about sit up straight, you know, your spine, uh, it's not keeping your spine poker straight as the spine has natural curvature points in it. And those curvature points in yoga or energy work and all, they're what we talk about as being chakras. So there are energy points. Um, some of them correspond with meridian points that we'll see in Chinese medicine, but, but generally they're the chakras. So we want to honor that and kind of when we're sitting upright, so we're talking about a skyscraper, your posture and alignment and, you know, rooting from the bottom and growing like a tree or standing upright, like a kind of like a, you know, a skyscraper. Well, that's kind of it. But again, standing up tall, standing up firm, almost like the London guard. So head lifting, you know, if we're teaching this in a class, it's, and you're grounding yourselves. If you're standing, then it's four corners of the feet into the earth or into the floor, shifting your gaze or your balance left and right, forward and, and back. So once you start feeling centered, then you're grounding from the bottom on up. So if you're standing, that's feet into the ground, you know, knees over ankles, hips over knees, little tension in the abdomen, how about the chest, shoulders up, relaxing back and down. Head lifting, chin tucking, breathing, maybe even smiling, noticing that, you know, a lot of that comes with how we're feeling, you know, our posture, we're feeling sad and we're slumping or we're feeling, you know, energetic and we're standing tall or we're feeling confident and the head is straight and the eyes are straight ahead as we enter the room. You know, simple things that uh, models and, um, you know, business people learn. And this is all, you know, fundamental stuff uh, for yoga as well. So anyway, meditation, again, act, state of mind, practice, initiated with a series of gestures with the physical body. And that's kind of where you want to start going with it. So start, you know, that's brings you back to yoga. You know, yoga is, you know, a lot of yoga, when we talk about yoga, people just really concentrate on the asana, which is the poses, but... You know, we're true yogis, so yogis feel that yoga is using the breath, still the fluctuations in the mind, and it's also just one uh, limb of the yogic path. 
you know, the other limbs are, you know, we have uh, the yamas and niyamas, or it's a really uh, the creed that, you know, yogis follow and the path that yogis follow. And it gets into ethics and uh, things like uh, asteya and ahimsa and, and really good fundamentals. And then we get into, you know, pranayama, which is the breath and, you know, asana, which are the poses. And then they'll have dharana, which is concentration and dhyana, which is meditation. And then you'll have uh, samadhi, which is that, that blissful state that you'll aspire to. So in yoga, the poses are really just to kind of train your body so you can sit for long periods of time in meditation without the body screaming to you, being like, oh my God, my legs are killing me being in lotus. So, you know, first trying to see if you can get in any type of easy pose or lotus. Um, the more I learn about this and the more then I'm taking meditation and trying to do the microcosmic orbit, the more then I've transitioned out of uh, typical lotus where my, I'm in full lotus and then I'm more in an easy pose. So the heel of my one of my foots is kind of rooted under my 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 hin yin pit, my hin yin point uh, or my perineal uh, point. And that as uh, for anybody that's ever done the microcosmic orbit, that's one of the one of the switches, you know, one of the locks. So bringing that to the mula banda or that. Uh, root banda, and then also uh, understanding, you know, the different locks as you're going up in meditation. These are all in the DVDs. These are all in, you know, knowledge that's been around forever. So basically in my world, it's been around for, for uh, uh, centuries. And, um, you know, again, this is not, not new. I'm just trying to bring it so it's a little bit more user-friendly, so you can use it, so you don't have to be intimidated by it. So, and just know some of this is technology. So if we're asking you to chant or believe something, you don't have, it's nothing spiritual. It can be spiritual as far as a spiritual experience for you. If you, uh, you know, strike one of the, the good meridians and have that experience, but it's, it's not a religion. Um, it's really, um, you know, mastering your internal self and uh, exploring with your, your own energies and your own internal edges just like if you're in a yoga class or, you know, quite frankly, working with the Z stick, you know, I had a client uh, recently who uh, was just in a pose and he said, you know what, this stick and you just get right there and you just get right to your edge and you can just explore your edge and either go further or back off. And that's uh, some of the magic with the Z stick um, and a lot of the Z stick training. So um, anyway, that's a little bit about meditation it's a little bit of what's happening in this podcast. I was looking at the stream. It looked like the, maybe the stream went out a little bit, but who knows? So let's see where we are right now. We went through meditation. Check, right? You're still with your intention. <clears throat> so, you know, stay with that intention of gratitude. And, you know, think about also now something that you're trying to clear in your life. So it could be something that, uh, is limiting you from being in your true possibility or, you know, kind of going for your personal legend, what, what you're really here on, on, on this planet for, what really you're here for, not what you're doing, not what you think you're here, but what you know you're here for. And for a lot of us, that's kind of what, you know, when you're a young kid, it's kind of that dream or that thing that we knew. And maybe we had um, a lot of opportunities to unlearn and forget. So um, hopefully some of this training, a lot of it going inward really allows you to kind of take some of the things we push down, uh, latent impressions, memories, um, dreams, aspirations. And when they bubble up, you know, if you're still the musician, you're still the actor, still whatever that is for you, um, you know, we want you going for it. We want you kind of uh, training and going for your body, but it also comes in going for the mental and the cerebral and going for where your heart is. So uh, that's like a, a lot of this energy work. So anyway, that's a little bit about that babble. So right now we're going to do a segment uh, coming up. It's kind of new to Zen Hailing. So this one is where I'm going to be breaking down. We'll call it the...
So let me get back here. And I have no idea why that just happened, but again, I was trying to go with to break it down. And this is where we get into breaking down a trading clip. So for this one, I've chosen some crazy, crazy clip where I'm training and just working out the bag a little bit. So bear with this. It's nothing that hit the speed bag, speed bag, develop that timing, heavy bag, just get used to, you know, sticking and moving or get used to feeling what a punch feels like when it's coming in. So anyway, continue on with your version of shadow boxing and continue on with another Zen Hailing training drill. I'll try and spare you from some of that babble. So basically I must have been doing some filming, but you know, a lot of times all I'm really doing is setting a camera up, um, working out. So in this day it's doing some bag training. So in bag training, what I'm explaining to the camera is really it's, you know, if you have the opportunity to hit a speed bag or heavy bag, that's great. But bag training or shadow boxing or any of that type of training, it's about exposing internal pressure releasing that in internal pressure so it's not just hitting the bag but you know i'm working on that that boxer breath that cabal body breath, that expulsion of breath that you know in yoga it's a cleansing breath but in uh boxing or mma or any of that kind of stuff a lot of that it's an expulsion and we do that so we don't over breathe also so we can keep going so uh, you know we can develop cadence and rhythm with the breathing so, you know, I'm paying attention to breathing just about in every exercise that I'm doing, whether I'm hitting the heavy bag or even now, if I'm going to go back in here and hit the speed bag, I'll cut a little bit to the clip. Heavy bag, or you're hitting the speed bag. If you're hitting the speed bag, if it's part of your bag training or you're part of your shadow boxing, then let it help you develop some of that sense of timing and rhythm that we look for. And that's all that balance that you're looking for. So again, it doesn't have to be all hard strikes. You could just be trying to develop that rhythm and timing. All right, so I'll spare you that. So, you know, with a lot of that, what I'm doing is trying to develop a sense of rhythm and timing. And, you know, some of that's one, 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 two, one, two, one, two. And for me, it's extra challenging doing any of this back training. I've had multiple shoulder surgeries. Uh, my left arm is, uh, is really hanging by a thread, but this allows it to keep loose. And, and I can also work on just, you know, you know, like Bruce Lee talks about, you know, you really just need that one inch. So if I ever needed to pull it, I just want to be in shore where I'm moving. And for this, I'm not working on hitting the bag real hard, like power striking, where you're really building up your joints. And you can also build up a lot of tendonitis that way. But here I'm just kind of working on a little bit of combination, just getting comfortable with my body and being able to throw some strikes or, you know, even when the bag, after you hit it, it's coming back at you a little bit. If you're really firing it hard, just you know, getting used to feeling a little bit of pressure at the end of a strike. Totally different than just doing shadow boxing. So if you have an opportunity to ever hit a heavy bag or a speed bag, uh, it's a lot of fun. And I get a lot of enjoyment out of it. Just trying some of these, uh, you know, fun things that, you know, I'll never have to, to do in real life. And again, I get to release a lot of different stress. So whatever that is for you, what is it? Is it hitting a bag? Is it going and running in the field? Is it singing? Is it immersing yourself in art? You know, I, I video edit. So for me, a lot of times, just immersing myself in the video edit, I can really get lost in that. And that becomes a meditation. And again, absorbing yourself uh, and completely absorbed in whatever you're focusing on art, you know, meditation, writing, video editing, whatever. What is yours? So again, whatever that is, 
make sure you ground yourself first. That's why we started this podcast with setting an intention of gratitude. Set the intention of gratitude every day. Even if you got to write it on your mirror, if you're a chick, write it in your, sorry about the chick thing, but if you're a woman, a beautiful, powerful woman, writing it on your mirror, in your lipstick or whatever that is. If you're a guy, man, writing it on your forehead, Dude, writing it on the toilet where you're in the bathroom where you're always going and hiding or whatever that is, but writing it where you see it every day, where it's going to be right here. So on the fridge or wherever your bad food is, writing it where you can see it so you can at least be conscious of it until it becomes natural, until it becomes part of your everyday routine. Fake it till you make it. Just do whatever habits you have to do. So again... Sorry you have to put up with some of this little training sequence here. But as you see right here, oh, this I'm transitioned from doing yang, which is hitting the bag and doing some of the bag training to more yin. And for this, this is balance for me. So, you know, it's also challenging myself a little bit with uh, heights. Uh, I'm not that great with heights. So for me... Just, you know, being up 20 or 20 some feet, um, you know, my heart's going. So I have to use my breath. And this is a version of Mountain Pose Balance. If you ever see me in the log and doing Mountain Pose Balance, um, this is a version of that. Yeah, granted, I'm not too far away. And for what kids do it nowadays, this is nothing. This is baby stuff. But for me, my heart's going. I'm using whatever internal uh, pressure and composure and the any tricks that I could do the, to keep my uh, internal pressure releasing and my composure about me. And then, you know, I'm working on my balance. And, you know, if I might have an area where, you know, if your leg's hurting or something like that, you're trying to do balance poses, it's hard. You're trying to walk on a log in the, in the you know, over water, it's a little bit crazy. So, you know, I like when I'm training going from yin to yang. So what I'm showing you is just a typical day of training for me, working on different stuff. You know, in between, I'm always stretching with the Z-Stick, so I'll always start with a uh, full standing series and balance series, and then I'll start if I'm going to do any, and that's, then I'm warming up. And that might take me just a couple minutes, and then here I could just screw around and act like um, I've got uh, grace and I could twirl, but, you know, I'm old. So, and anyway, and I bring it from outside to in, so... Even though right now this is still more of a, a yin exercise, just twirl the stick, kind of just go with the momentum of the stick, dropping it. See, I'm trying to avoid my cat, and you know I'm I'm always trying to train. So if I have opportunities, I don't. If it's raining outside, I'm seeking inside. I'm trying to get inside and see what's happening. So uh, anyway, we might go back to that. I'm kind of bored with that piece right now. But hope you had a good laugh. Hope you have and can find whatever vehicle that is in your life uh, that allows you to kind of release that internal pressure and stay with the gratitude. Stay with the intention, okay? Whatever, whatever you set. And also stay with whatever you're trying to release. So again, you could be attaching that to each exhale as well or just to each, some of these expulsion exercises. Get out of my life. Get out, get out of it when it's not serving. Mentally, get it out of there. Don't play it, you know, get it out. If it bubbles up, don't try and force it back down. Get it the hell out. Anyway, so we're going to go down. That's the break it down segment. I hope you guys enjoyed break it down segment. We're going to do that just about every podcast if we can. I'm hoping to also have some guests. But this next, this next one is called, is where we talk about a situation outside um, the dojo. Now, you found yourself something funky. 
upside the trailer, off the mat, uh, where we had to kind of use some of that training. So I kind of had to think about that. I feel like, you know, in yoga, we talk about that being yoga off the mat all the time when we're doing that. So I'm like, hmm, what's the situation that would be? And, you know, it happened this week. My car went. Um, I had a bunch of different issues with, you know, people and vendors and things like that. So things that, quite frankly, I, I just didn't want to deal with. But, you know, so at first negative thoughts just started coming in. I'm like, bah, 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 bah. negative thought, negative thought, negative thought. Then what happened was as soon as I, I noticed it and it was fast uh, and I'm so grateful it was fast because a lot of times I'll just let it go and I'm human just like the rest of you at home. So negative thought, then all of a sudden I just thought about it. So in this one, it was like my car went, I was just having a bad day. And then all of a sudden uh, I saw my cat who's been sick and then my cat's been coming back, showing a lot of resilience and I was very grateful for that. And then I started thinking about some of the people in my life. I've had some people that have come into my life that uh, I'm really grateful for and uh, that I, I value friendships and, um, and I love what I'm doing. I love what I'm doing, my work. And I'm also grateful that, you know, uh, I'm receiving uh, and I'm being abundant and all that. So I've got so much to be grateful for. So to actually be in that limitation, it's crazy. It's mental illness of my own. So, you know, just noticing that. That's the same as the non-negativity meditation. You know, non-negativity meditation is just really monitoring your thoughts and trying to go a minute or two minutes or five minutes without having a negative thought because we have negative thoughts all the time. So um, it's really just monitoring that kind of stuff. So anyway, that is that. So... That is my outside the dojo. What's your outside the dojo? Where, you know, for me, I was able to control this situation by um, getting on my mat, getting in lotus pose. Uh, first, again, just like that meditation thing, still in the body, get myself in good posture and alignment. Then I start working the breath and all of a sudden, all this stuff comes to my head, all this, and I'm, I'm writing. So a lot of times I'm sitting down to meditate and I've got my journal or a piece of paper and pen, and I'm just writing in between. I'm coming in and out. So meditation is not, you know, for me, a lot of times, if I can slip into it fast and I can get in a good state where I get lost, good for me, right? And that's where you want to try and get to at least getting uh, an opportunity to get into that state because that might not be complete meditation, but, you know, you want to find what you get lost in, and that's really a lot of it. So uh, stay grateful recognize those moments outside the dojo and we're moving on to the next segment here in this segment we're going to explore a little bit about some of the quotes that, that are out there so in this one we call advice for the past a lot of sages have said it yeah, get up and I'll bury this telephone in your head. many times Sages have said some unbelievable things. So one of the first advices from the past or quotes that when I was looking at my different quotes, I, you know, I'm so influenced by Bruce Lee quotes. He's got all the attitude and, but, you know, and training at, at attributes and, um, but, you know, these are just simple quotes. So what came to me was the first one. So this first one is a great one, and I love this quote. And this quote says, I laugh when I hear that the fish in the water is thirsty. I laugh when I hear that men go on pilgrimage to find God. And it's from Kabir, thousands of years old. So what's this mean? Well, to me... Everything we need is right here. So to me, it shows that, you know, we have everything. It's ridiculous for, you know, I'm here in Philadelphia. 
So a lot of times people will say, man, you need to go to India. You just have to experience that. And, you know, I feel like I have a, a strong practice. So, uh, you know, I don't know what I don't know. I may need to go there. But, um, you know, my India is right here. You know, my India is learning um, from all over the world. And my India is created, you know, for me, I create my own, my India here. You know, I feel like this is the India. They need to come here uh, to get away from, from their peace. So, <laughs> you know, that's totally not true. But in my deluded mind, that's how I'm creating that. So I don't feel like I need to do that. Uh, although it would be such a gift. And what an experience that would be. Zen hailing in India. I want to see Asha, Osho. Anyway, I've had many opportunities, uh, invitations, and I'm going to take it one of these days. But right now, my work is here in the States. And, you know, get back to the quote. I laugh when I hear that the fish in the water is thirsty. It's kind of what I was talking about, me complaining about the little things. Fish in the water is thirsty. Of course a fish in the water is not thirsty. Of course not. He's surrounded by water. You just got to breathe. So it's the same with us. A lot of times you just got to breathe it. So that fish is breathing in the water through the gills. And for us, it's breathing in the air, breathing through those moments. No, we're just supported. We've got everything we need right here. You just have to acknowledge it. So just knowing that, you know, but we come a lot of times and we're operating out of a point of scarcity, out of a point of, you know, not having that or, you know, struggle instead of surrendering and letting go like the fish, the fish, only the salmon are swimming upstream. Everybody else is kind of going with the flow and the salmon stream upstream, upstream for a purpose. So that's all part of their path. So that is what they're supposed to be doing. Them swimming upstream is downstream because it would create problems and complications if they didn't. So if it appears upstream, but that's really them doing their dharma and going downstream, laying their eggs, all that. So anyway, love that quote. Let's get back to it. Take it a little bit further. I laugh when I hear that men go on pilgrimage to find God. Exactly. So that's kind of what I was bringing up with India. It's not about the place. The place is in your heart. The God is in you. The God is in your heart. That's how I interpret that. So, you know, we don't have to go somewhere for that. We have to start going somewhere, and that's going inward. So taking that inward path and, you know, experiencing the God in you, the God-like feeling, the God-like spirit. The, the God charge, whatever God is for you, universe, creation, even if you're no God, you know, whatever that is for you. So anyway, love that quote from Kabir. Share it if you need to. And we're going to go to another one. So back to advice from the past. our eyes so you know we believe what we see and that's a good rule to go by and then of course it's whatever we can take in with our ears and most of the time we're listening to other people and other things out there so we're listening to noises or sounds created by other people so our ears believe others but then our intuition it's our intuition that believes
So you know, we talked about meditation, our intuition, our third eye. That's the area where you know, a lot of people talk about our psychic hotline, our own psychic hotline. Activate our intuition. Our intuition, a lot of times, is our gut, too. So, yeah, it might activate our intuition up here. It might activate our, our intuition up here, but it's really down here in our gut. Our gut is an area where, you know, that's why we get those gut feelings on things sometimes, and we just can't feel it, or we get nauseous. We don't know why. We're nervous before something even happened. That's our intuition. That could be some deja vu, but it's our, we pay attention to those things. They can be great signs. They can be great. Uh, navigational compasses for us, Christina. <laughs> they can be great navigational uh, tools for us to kind of avoid the pitfalls, avoid the normal things that uh, we continue to do, th those repetitive mistakes. <laughs> so anyway, I love We know the truth because we believe in our own intuition. So just follow that. Follow that type of, just follow it. Follow that advice. Believe in your own intuitive abilities, in your own intuition. And we're going to get back to more advice from the past. Now get up and I'll bury this telephone in your head. Mm -hmm. So this next one, this is a good one here. So this one, this quote is from Seneca Rome, as you can see, 4 BC. And it's very simply, it's not because things are difficult that we do not dare. It is because we do not dare that they are difficult. Again, it's not because things are difficult that we do not dare. It's because we do not dare that they become difficult or that they're difficult. So what does that mean? Well, to me, it really means that, you know, we, we put all these, all this pressure on ourselves. So and a lot of times, you know, take it to sales. So it's a sales guy that every, every week is turning in his sales forecast and he's putting that same customer on there. But he's never really going in there and trying to take the sale, um, you know, trying to do something to either get get it or move that customer in that direction. And a lot of that's because they don't want that prospect to go away. You don't want that perceived opportunity to go away. You know, people do this with Facebook and social media all the time. It's false sense of security where they're surrounding themselves with, um, you know, things that make them feel good. So that's okay if you want to create that reality, but. Um, it's not always the reality. So, you know, for us going for it, you know, daring to go for it, uh, we, we beat ourselves up so much when we're not going for it. Um, you know, we, our self image takes a blow. Uh, the mental thoughts become very negative if we're not going for it. So going for it, it's not because things are difficult that we do not dare, it's because we don't dare that it's difficult. If we're going for it, if we're going for it, then we're going for it. We're in our possibility. We're in our personal legend. We're doing our dharma. So we're just going for it. We're not going for it only if we get this result, only be that because I'm only going for it because I have this certain attachment to outcome. Eh, eh, eh. You know, that's a lot of it. We have these attachments to outcome. If we could just take it away, just do the work for the work, you know, obviously, you know, we need to make money. So that's, that's a part of uh, something that I think everybody struggles with. And especially when you're, when you're trying to do, um, you know, some of the work like yogis and teach yoga or do uh, things that, you know, don't a lot of times carry a big uh, monetary reward at, uh, front at, at first. Um, but, Belief and doing the work for, you know, your heart, for your own spirit, for whoever else you're helping. So whether it's service or not, you know, when it becomes pure, 
when there's truth in it, then that service that you're doing, <clears throat> excuse me, then that service you're doing, you know, hopefully can then transition into something that, that has a monetary reward. If that's really what, what you need <clears throat> that work to be. So one thing I'm noticing here is as I'm talking about the subject, if I'm truthful, I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but my voice just kind of phlegmed up and <clears throat> up a little bit. So, you know, as I was just talking about that, I noticed something I'm like, oh, why is that happening? Is that something because I'm dealing with this issue? And uh, it quite possibly could be. So if I am, I'm going to examine that after this podcast when I can take some time to go inward and see what that was all about. So that's kind of the work here. That's kind of doing some of this. Again, daring to go and be dareful. Go for it. Go for whatever your dreams are. Get out of that damn job that's robbing your soul, you know. If, if you're somebody who just, man, I should have been playing music or I should have been that personal trainer or, man, I, if I would have just acted or if I would have just called that girl or whatever it is, you know, no regrets. Life is short. Just do it. That's why Nike has that. It's simple. You got to go out and start doing it. You know, fake it till you make it. Look, everybody out there, everybody, you might think they're confident. You might think they know it. But oh, there's a lot of people out there that you're in the same boat with. So, you know, have the spirit, uh, you know, laugh at yourself a little bit. Don't take yourself so seriously. Um, love others around you. Acknowledge what you do have. This is some of the work. If you can start doing this on a daily, including me, Zen Hailing, Tim Kelly, it's going to take us a long way. Um, you know, with navigating through some of these uh, tumultuous times. So anyway, that's a little bit about the quotes. Thanks for putting up with that segment. And we're going to end out here. We got some questions uh, from the internet. So I'm going to go to some questions and the question and answer segment. This question and answer segment is... A couple of questions I say looking at the questions Real simply, it's how should I breathe in a yoga class? So, you know, people want to know, how do I breathe in a yoga class? And it's real simple. I mean, for me, if you have some of the yoga breaths in your arsenal, then I think you should pick the one that allows you to, um, depending on the class. You know, if it's a yin yoga class, I might not tell you to be doing the Ujjayi breath the whole time, but it really, I think, is how you want to approach that class. So I can always approach a yin yoga class, which are soft stretches, but I could be bringing... The Ujjayi breath, the powerful Ujjayi breath to that whole class. So, you know, that yin class could be an amped up practice for me. So, you know, that's some of the control that we have as we get to learn some of these tools. For you, if you're just starting out, just simple belly breathing, just simply counting your breath, or just simply trying to have deep, even inhales and match them with deep, releasing exhales as you're going through your practice, so as you're doing your poses, but making sure that you're breathing. So that's why I like an audible breath. The audible breath it's almost a, like a mantra. It's a reminder to me. Or, you know, that I'm breathing. So even though it might disturb others around me, you have to pick and choose what works for you. So find whatever breath that is. Belly breathing. It could be the Durga breath. Uh, you know, breaths like Nadi Sadhana are situational. They're to prep you for sitting down doing something creative. Kabbalah body could be something that you're doing intermittent or at yang portions of your yoga training. So, um, again, the more you get to learn about this, the more you'll know when to apply what breath to what practice, whether it's yoga or martial arts or any of that, and whether it's yin or yang or it's some of your, your uh, athletic uh, prowess. So, you know, you're playing golf and you're trying to get that composure, great for golf or even doing things like, you know, hockey or lacrosse where you're, you know, 
you're, you're as you're striking, which you're really not striking, as you're releasing the ball or as you're striking something, that's where you're exposing the breath, just like a power lifter. So again, knowing how to use the breath in conjunction with whatever athletic activity, cross training, any of that kind of stuff. And just knowing also that, again, doing these breathing exercises, it's the same as jumping on a Stairmaster. It's, you know, using your breath to affect your uh, body's uh, systemic, voluntary and involuntary system uh, and escalate your heart rate and, you know, increase peristalsis, all that kind of same stuff. So anyway, back to questions. Some of the other questions were, do I have to be flexible? So do I have to be flexible? To do this training? Do I have to be a yogi? Do I have to be all flexible to do this? You know, you want to bring flexibility. The physical flexibility obviously can help, but look, so you got to start somewhere. So even if you can't touch your knees when you're bending forward and all, you have to go to where your limits are. This is not no pain, no gain. It's not like the gym. You want to be flexible, but I would be more concerned with you bringing that mental flexibility to the table being flexible in if somebody asks you to do something, being open to doing it, you know, as opposed to being closed-minded. This is not going to help me or what do they know or something. Trusting, uh, you know, putting yourself out there a little bit. So being a little bit flexible, whether even it's at times so when we ask somebody wants to train you, but, you know, uh, they want to train you at a certain time. It doesn't fit into your time. You know, maybe be flexible a little bit. So mental flexibility translates into physical flexibility and you'll start to see that as your body starts to change, your mental thoughts will change, your aura starts to change, all that kind of stuff. So that's another question. You don't have to be flexible, and you'll gain physical flexibility through the practice, whatever practice that is, Tai Chi, yoga, Pilates, who knows, martial arts, Aikido. Next on the question list is, so why yoga stretches over something like Pilates? Well, why you would do yoga stretches over something like Pilates is, you know, for me, it's yoga is more than the poses. So, you know, I believe Pilates has the physical work of Pilates and the breath work of Pilates. But for me, the attractive part of yoga is, you know, yoga, just like Zen healing, for me, it's a life sport. It's something that I use, you know, I, I was an athlete most of my life. And then also going through school, like most of us, we're in, on teams, we're doing sport, and all of a sudden we're getting into college and out of college, and next thing you know, we're not playing sports anymore, we haven't taken a class, we haven't been certified in anything, we stop doing some of the necessary training, um, and then we're out there in life raising, you know, people raising children and families and in careers and losing themselves. So we unlearn a lot of what we learned those first, you know, 20 some years. So getting back to some of that, getting back to the basics. So why I like yoga is, you know, the eight limbs. Again, the yamas and the yamas. Uh, for me, I was raised Catholic, but the yamas and the yamas explore similar things like that, you know, uh, Ahimsa, nonviolence, or Asteya, don't steal. So, you know, when I grew up as Catholic, Asteya for don't stealing would, would mean to me, uh, you know, don't going into the store and stealing a candy bar or whatever that is. But in the yoga world, it's that, but also understanding that we steal emotions all the time or we steal somebody's dreams or their time all the time. So knowing that that asteya or that stealing piece can come and that's the different levels that you can talk about when you're exploring yoga uh, or, you know, outside the dojo, off the mat and also looking at the different micro movements. That's the mental micro movements. That's, that's the outside of the physical practice where that kind of transcends. So I love having that piece where it's the yamas and the yamas of yoga and then also the asana, which are the poses, which is just like the poses and Pilates, and also the pranayama, which is the breath, but the concentration and the meditation, and you know, and then maybe that samadhi piece, that is really what uh, attracts me to uh, something, uh, a system like yoga, or even, you know, yoga for me is just a system within Ayurveda, which is really the overarching system of all that, and that's the true science 
for me of self-healing. So um, that is the question and answer segment. Guys, we're running a little deep here. SARS a little choppy at different times here. I'm engineering this and delivering it. So I appreciate you hanging in there with this podcast. Again, go to zenhealing.com for any type of any type of things. Merchandise, zenhealing.com. Go there for uh, advice. Learn a little bit. Get a Z-stick. Uh, send somebody on to the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the podcast or the YouTube channel. Uh, if you like something, send in your questions. If you like something, let us know. But, um, you know, know I'm committed to the work. So anything breathing, meditation, movement, and energy, we're going to continue to podcast. Hopefully we'll do it every week to 10 days. And as the audience grows, um, you know, we'll have some different guests on. Uh, we, we'll start to maybe integrate some audience questions, some live questions, and also maybe integrate also some viewer videos. So you guys, you can also send videos in or contact me anytime, Tim at zenhailing.com or zenhailing.com. And again, continue on with your practice, the Zen essence, the yogic path, the martial spirit, breath, meditation, and movement. I thank you for joining me on the Zen Hailing podcast. And we're going to close out. We're going to close out with just a video that I did. And that is... Let's close out on, hmm. How about let's close out just on na, 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 a meditation video. So in this meditation video, maybe I'll put in what's meditation. Nah, you already told you about that and I babbled, babbled all about that. So let's put in about a section on gravity. Stay tuned, guys. Have a great one. See you next podcast. So one of the other things we're going to talk about in this DVD is gravity. And this all goes with the physical posture of yoga, the physical postures that we're assuming with that. And a lot of this is really to appear weightless. Again, so we can sit for long periods of time if we're in a seated meditative practice, but also to help ease the tension on our physical body. And a lot of that is, we're, what we're feeling with the tension is the physical effects of gravity and what it does to the body. You see skyscrapers and they are extremely tall buildings, standing tall and high. And they do that because they're stacked completely, perfectly on top of each other. And they're completely balanced. Just like these blocks here. You see a child sometimes and they're playing with physical blocks and they're stacking them on top of each other. And sometimes they're stacking them and you see them stack one on the other. If they're not stacked completely aligned on top of each other, they're gonna be prone to tipping over. So again, stacking blocks on top of each other, just like this foundation of a skyscraper of a building, and just like the foundation of our spine and our alignment. It all goes to how our body feels in relation to the force of gravity. So what is gravity? Well, gravity is an invisible force that surrounds us throughout our whole lives. It's an invisible force and also a source in our lives. And it's the actual element that when we go through life, that we either feel heavy or tense or free and light. And this is indicative of, you know, the 98 pound woman who feels just weighed down by the world and feels heavy and sluggish. Or you have the man who's 250 pounds and he feels light as a feather. And that's all because of their different relation to gravity and their relationship to gravity and what it's doing to their physical body. So in a lot of yoga and meditation and martial arts, we're trying to appear and feel weightless. And again, that comes with gravity, the way our body is held together and supported, and how we're relating to this invisible source. 
and force that surrounds us. So again, gravity can really do a number on our physical body, especially when it's not aligned properly. But a body that's properly aligned and relaxed can completely surrender to the force of gravity and still be standing. Where most things, the force of gravity over time will bring them, will bring it to the ground, even tall buildings. Again, buildings where that are older, whose structure maybe wasn't completely aligned or maybe where the soil underneath them has given way and now the, the building is starting to be off balance. You see that building over time, these are the buildings that crumble. Gravity is such a strong force around us. And it's a force that can really enhance our lives. And if we can master our relationship to gravity, we can go through life feeling light and free and tense free. Or we can go through life having this force completely weigh us down. So hopefully in this DVD, we're gonna teach you some techniques with our alignment and through our breath and through just constant awareness of your posture and your alignment, whether it's through your meditation technique or even out there walking or if you're doing dancing or anything physical, the way we carry our body against that invisible force of gravity, hopefully we're gonna be able to have more energy and more vitality in your own lives. So let's get started. Namaste.